I'm Karen Geiser and we live on a farm just a mile down the road from Layman's store and we have a special guest with us today. My name is Mark. I do not live on a farm, but I would love to. That would be awesome. And uh, it would be even more awesome if I could make my own butter at home. Oh, that, so you have bu <laughs> farm envy and butter envy. I do. I okay. really do. I really do. I'm going to use that on the air tomorrow. By okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, in this churn um, is we started with cream from our Jersey cows. So okay. you milk the cow. Right. The, let the cream rise to the top. In the store, it doesn't do that anymore. Okay, I got Because it's you. homogenized, right. so the, most of it is. And um, and so I skimmed the cream off the top, and I started with cre just cream in here. Actually, we've been churning for a little while. It is almost butter. Awesome. So we are churning. We're getting our exercise while we're making our food. Now, my visual of a butter churn is the old school, uh, you know, wooden ones. So this, yes. this, so this is, is the, the high-tech okay. version. This is the high-tech version. Yeah, these are actually okay. made right here at Layman's and modeled after the old daisy churns. Oh, cool. Uh, and so um, I'm going to let you give it a try. Okay. All right. Here we go. All you have to do is go round and round. Bicycle, okay. bicycle style. See, now I could do this. So I could live on a farm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. If you can churn butter, you can live on a farm. I understand. I understand. <laughs> what do you guys think? So what's the, what's the science behind this? The I mean, science the, the, behind it. I mean, the, 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 the I mean, What's happening with chemistry? Yeah. I know okay. it more or less. Yeah. yeah. But, one, one year I had a... He was a retired chemical engineer, professor type person, and he wanted to know the exact, okay, we're putting in physical action. Right. What is happening in this reaction? And basically the fat molecules are banging themselves together and sticking. Okay. And so the fat's going to make the butter right. and then left over, we're going to have buttermilk, which is kind of like a whey and that skim. Okay. Sometimes it's called blue John okay. and the old timers like to drink it. Woo. I don't. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll use it to bake with, like making buttermilk pancakes or buttermilk biscuits. Oh boy, and it's good. wonderful for that. All right. But if you get the right person, they will. They would love They're to stick afraid. a straw. Oh, they would love it. A <laughs> little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper poured oh. over their cornbread, and it is good stuff. Well, yeah, but it's, be a cornbread, it's a cornbread, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so it usually takes about 20 or 30 minutes when your cream's at room temperature. Okay. So, so right. we're getting so close. So you can okay. kind of start seeing the yellow coming together and the white coming. So it's going to get into a bigger clump. Oh, And okay. we will have a clump of butter. So if you come back in a little while, you will see the real butter. But in the meantime, Shonda, we brought butter for him to yes, sample that there, we made. Mom. Hi, Shonda. Hi, I'm Shonda. Nice to see you. Good to see excellent, you, too. Excellent, excellent. By the yeah. magic of television. Yes, there, there it seems is. To be some butter directly it. Yes, so we have oh, bread and this. Look at that. Now, yes. see, that's what it's. That's what butter is supposed to look like. Yes, right there. yes. So this yes. is butter from Jersey cows on What's grass. This? So this is, um, yeah. The, re the color comes from the cows eating green grass, makes yellow butter. Oh. So that's during the summer, sense. during the spring and summer, the butter is deeper yellow than it would be in the winter. Right. And I believe, eventually, somewhere there are some sample. You get to sample it. Sometime. I just want to smell it. You just want to smell it or dip your finger. It's in it? okay. it literally. I mean, this to me, it smells like a, like movie theater butter. Like this is what it smells supposed to smell like. That's right. It's alive. Uh, it's a what? It, no, it, this, a is, this is raw butter. Okay. <laughs> it's so alive. It is, it is alive, and that's a good. It's a good thing to be alive. Absolutely. It's full Take of the enzymes that actually mm. some people mm. see this as super health food. Um, some home. of the herd share farms around here sell this for seventeen dollars a pound. Oh my! I'm not, gosh. and I'm not kidding. And people wow. buy it, yeah. which I'm, you know, I guess. But after they, after they smell it, they yeah, and they use that as a health food for for different different um, ailments from arthritis to whatever. Oh, so I believe it. So butter is good stuff. Mm. So all right. So, so am I allowed to just like to do a little, do a little? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I, I mean, I don't want to. Well, wanna, well, there we have. I don't want to contaminate. No. Oh. And we'll give you a yep. bigger sample See, that's when what we have. To be. I was gonna say, oh we'll stick gosh, a green so bean in it or a tomato in it. Mm. Mm. Oh some edible weeds. Yeah. 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 So we yeah. also brought things that are we're picking out of the garden, and we also have plenty of weeds in our garden. Yes. Actually, my daughter brought this one in. She said, "Do you think this one's big enough? <laughs> this, is this one that do you have weeds in your house?" I do, and that looks familiar. This is Purslane. Okay. And he's he is very happy right now. It's hot and dry. Right. And he's probably the most nutritious thing you're growing in your garden. Really. Oh, and mine too and in these leaves you can throw in your salads or okay. and they're very high in omega-3s so they, they oh, taste like bad. lettuce a little bit of lettuce yeah. you can also chop them up stem them on saute them with onions it's a traditional Mexican dish my aunt who is Mexican does it mm -hmm. uh, and we, at first we were a little nervous like about her eating all our weeds them. there you go well, now you need to take a dip of butter mm. you know at my house 
Here, what we're gonna do, yeah. I'm gonna take a bunch of these leaves and I'm really gonna get into that butter. Yeah. Here we go. See, my husband mm. has a little bit of bread with his butter. <laughs> yeah, like I have a little bit of coffee with my creamer. Yeah. Oh my God. There we go. No. Okay, let's let's uh, let's be a little let's more a step up. <laughs> I'm not afraid. We were eating weeds and butter, so we were getting omega threes from both ends. Uh, they are good. All right. There it is. Oh, that's still wimpy. You need to just <laughs> slather it. Up. Well, I'm not afraid. <laughs> Trying to get mm. me to eat is not, is not a problem. Not a problem. That, that that, yeah, there we go. All right. There we go. We're getting right. there. Like a bagel. Okay, so you have got your dose of, of good stuff for the mm. day. Mm. Yeah, so we brought different weeds that we can eat. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to think. Here's another one that's from the yard plantain. Does that one look familiar? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so when it's young, you can throw it in your salad. Some people feed it to their rabbits. Another really good thing is if you get a bee sting, mm -hmm. mash it up, put it on. It helps pull out the toxins on a bee sting. And I, I stepped did not on know a, that. I stepped on a bee with each foot one day last <laughs> week. Not a, not a wise thing to do. My no. son was like, uh, "Mom, were you barefoot?" He's like, "You deserve that." <laughs> yeah, there <laughs> like, you go. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> so I had plantain taped to both feet. Oh and actually, it, and it really it, it felt good. It's kind of cool, kind of cool. Yeah, it no, really absolutely. helps. But you can also eat that. Um, in here is stinging nettle. It's in the bag because it will. St are you with a name like stinging nettle? Is this something we want to eat? It's not something you want to run through. It's okay. not something you necessarily want to eat raw. Okay. But once it. it's cooked, it will. Um, the, the hairs will retract and it will lose oh, its sting. Okay, so it's really so early in the spring, we'll eat it as a cooked green like spinach. Okay, so you uh, boil it down. Then. Yeah, okay. yeah. Or we'll put it in tea, like with mint or okay. peppermint and other things. So that's another good for you cool. weed. Um, we brought vegetables, and this time of year we're fermenting some of our vegetables. This is like this is um, lacto-fermented dill pickles. It's the same idea for making sauerkraut. So we're also no making kidding. sauerkraut. So what's going on up here? So instead of the big old crock mm -hmm. that Grandma had, we're doing a simple countertop version, and this is a anaerobic process, and that means okay. no oxygen. No oxygen. The, yes. the bacteria don't like the oxygen, so this lets the gases bubble out without right. the oxygen going back in. So this is like an airlock like they would use on wine making. Oh, okay. So the water in there lets gases out. So it. these are dill pickles that my children love. And the sauerkraut is still cooking at home. But here's a bit of kimchi left from last year. Ooh, boy, and this is a, a, yeah. a spicy sauerkraut. So wow. we're waiting on our fresh sauerkraut. How, how long does this usually take? Or what, how do you know when it's... This, the pickles will only take about three days oh, at really? room temperature and they're done. These are probably ready to go in the refrigerator and we could eat these. Oh. Uh, sauerkraut takes more like six weeks. Okay. It's, it's a little bit longer longer fermentation My and the, this to do his own kraut. okay yeah, tomato kraut, so yeah and the sour and the sauerkraut pickles everything fermented is is really in style again oh yeah and, and it's not just because they're nostalgic that grandma or grandpa did it it's yeah. because people are messed up <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> no or their children have gut problems or yeah, different things true. and they're yeah. like these old, real, live bacteria, probiotics. Yes. And how do we learn, how do we make them? Right. So when I've been doing demonstrations on sauerkraut and these young families are here, I said, yeah. so why, why are you interested in this? Well, my kid has blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, and we have to. Or okay. Yeah, it's really, it's really fascinating. So, so it, all of a sudden, these things that grandma and great grandma did are, yeah. the science has caught up. And people yeah. are saying, let's do it. Let's do this again. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Holy cow. So, and in Nelson. the middle of all <laughs> these things that we're harvesting, mm -hmm. we're planting again for fall. Wow. And for cold frame, things that we're going to eat all winter. Okay. I have a small greenhouse, but we also cover some things. So we've got greens that can handle the cold. They've got bok choy and kale and Swiss chard, some lettuce and arugula. So, so those will be able to handle the cold. Now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, these can handle the cold. And we'll be planting spinach, radishes, turnips uh, again. So that is... All the good stuff. So yeah, it's a busy time of year. Yeah, Everything really is right is. and things need planted and there's still weeds and... And, and the funny part is, for most people, they think, okay, we're moving up on harvest time and that's it. And then they're done, you know. Yeah. But the reality yeah. is, you're getting ready to, to plant some of the yeah. cold weather stuff here, too. Yeah. 
So, so do you have awesome. a garden? You don't have a farm. No. Do you have a, a windowsill? No. Yeah, up there, yes. In fact, uh, up on the uh, top of, uh, I actually moved into the city just recently. Uh -huh. So upstairs I've got this open uh, deck area there, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue to plant up there. Okay, yeah. so you can start your Absolutely. lettuce again yes. and, and... Very yeah. cool. Well so done. this is just a sampling of what I bring along from the farm and I'm here on Thursdays playing okay. with the layman's toys and some of their <laughs> heirloom seeds and, and their bubblers and all the perfect picklers. Very and cool. So. And entertaining crowds. Uh, yeah, oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Eat this. It is fun. Yeah. Oh, I do. I do. Oh, okay. And this is yeah, the coolest, okay. coolest thing. What do we um, These are Mexican sour gherkins. They're little cucumbers. Oh, okay. Um, that look like watermelons. So eat this. All right. Do you just pop it in all the ones? Just pop them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you like cucumbers? They're a little oh. bit. They have a little sour tinge to them. Not bad though. But. You go around telling people this is all your watermelon crop did in the drought. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they are a wow. fun little crop. Excellent. So. Very good. Well, this has been outstanding. Reintroduce yourself to the nice people. Okay, so this is I'm Karen Geyser, and we've just brought some good farm goodies from down the road here and I'm at Layman's. And she brought uh, all kinds, of, and I ate all of the things that she brought. <laughs>